Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Cocapelli, which is a new game from Stefan Feld, all about celebrations and ceremonies and things. We've got these boards, we're going to be opening ceremonies on them, we're going to be playing cards to them, and once those ceremonies have four cards, they will score and everything will be great. The various cards will give you special powers while they exist on your board, and you are trying to score the most points. The game goes on until a player has played all of their draw pile, or each ceremony has scored twice, meaning that the end game tiles will all be out. There are 10 of them in a two player game, which is what I'm playing now, which is a little bit different to the main game, but I'll show you how. Just before we get started, I recommend you turn on the Klingon subtitles. If you would like to be informed of any mistakes I might make, they'll be corrected there. Thanks, Steve. And if you would like to help me keep making playthroughs, it's patreon.com forward slash slicker drips. You get to vote on them. You get to see what's happening. You get to see the videos early, but most of all, you get to ensure they keep happening, which is fantastic. Thank you so much, patrons. So I will just mention this up front, that in a three or four player game of Cocopelli, you would have your player boards like this, and that's important for where you are allowed to play cards. So you can play cards to your own ceremonies on your player board, but also you can play them to the closest two areas of your neighbors. So that is your play area, basically. You can't open ceremonies in other players' areas, usually anyway, but you can play cards to them. In a two-player game, you can play cards to all four of your opponent's areas, but there is a fifth area which doesn't have a nice uh, totem space. There's a fifth area under the draw pile that we use, and usually anyway, you can't play to the other player's fifth area there. So you do have one safe space from any other player unless they get, there it is right there. So some of the power cards as well might not make sense just from their text on them, but they are tweaked a little bit for two players. So the, the spider woman ability here, if you have this in your player area, as long as it's there, you may play cards on all four of your neighbor's ceremonies. Well, in a two player game, I can always do that means in a two-player game, I can play to all five of my neighbor's ceremonies. So we start the game with five cards. I kept a uh, little glass Marty secret there for now, but I have two actions on my turn. Those actions are draw a card. It's draw a card from the deck. You generally don't want to do that unless you have some incentive to do it. It's a bit inefficient because any time your hand is completely empty, you score a victory point and draw three cards. But that's the most efficient way of getting more cards, but you might get abilities that help you out with that draw card action. Uh, you can open a ceremony and your own village only. That is basically starting a new stack in any of the five zones you're allowed in a two player game. Play the first card to it. You have that ability now and you can play more cards to it to try and finish that ceremony. Play cards is the next action. It's an action to play a card, but you can play it on any of your own ceremonies and any of the available four of your opponents. You can cancel a ceremony in your area. So just take a stack of cards, discard it, don't get anything for them. And you can exchange cards, put as many cards as you like from your hand on the bottom of your draw pile and draw that many again. But it's an action. You can do the same action twice if you want to. You can mix things up. It's up to you. So these are the 10 abilities in the game right now. These are the recommended set for your first game, for learning the game. We've also got six Cocopelli cards in our decks that are wild cards and can count for any ceremony. Right now though, I've got your ceremonies are completed with only three cards instead of the usual four it takes to complete and score a ceremony. I really like that. You can play cards on all of your neighbor's ceremonies, including the special secret one. Uh, when one of your ceremonies is completed, you are awarded a victory point. So even if someone else completes one of my ceremonies, I could get an extra point for it. And your Cocopelli cards, so the wild cards I mentioned, count as two Cocopelli cards, but only at the time that you play them. So you would want to maybe use them to complete a ceremony, a ceremony that's already got two cards on it. Play a Cocopelli card, it counts as two at that instant and would complete it. I think though, I would like my ceremonies to be completed with just three cards. Although, yeah, that, that could be used to, to Marty's advantage. So I'm gonna start a ceremony with that. And you can, you can start it way up here, it's just that I can't start this one down there. It doesn't all look all nice and orderly. And also, I think I would like, when one of your ceremonies is completed, you are awarded a point. I'm going to put that in my protected space. So even if Marty does complete one of my ceremonies, yeah, he's, he's going to be giving me an extra point. I don't draw more cards, that's an action, or I've got to clear my hand for that. So let's have a look at what Marty's got. So he started off with a Cocopelli card. He has got, similar to me, the ability that makes his Cocopelli's count as more cards. And he's got, for the draw card action, he gets to draw one card extra. And each time a Cocopelli card is played on your ceremonies, you are awarded a victory point. So there's no overlap that Marty can see from what I've played. Uh, I think every time a Cocopelli card is played, 
he's going to get out. And his Cocopelli cards count as two cards because he's got one right here. So if he plays that Cocopelli card to finish, you know, he could play this next and then complete it with a Cocopelli card, but then he would lose that ability because it would uh, be a completed ceremony, score and go away. So we'll see how he goes from that. Back to me. So I could help Marty along in this and there's reasons why you want to and need to play to other players' ceremonies. You can only have five different ceremonies open on your player board at any time, and there are ten different types of card in the game. And also, if you are the person that completes the ceremony, that puts the fourth or third, if somebody's got this power out, uh, puts the final card on a ceremony, then you are going to get big points. The player whose ceremony it was will always get at least a point, but the person who actually played the card that finished the ceremony will get the four or later three points for finishing that type of ceremony. But I think for now, I'm just going to keep building my own up. And, and, oh, and the other thing is that you need four cards usually to complete a ceremony, but there are only three of each card in your deck. There are six Cocopellis, but three of each ceremony card. So this card isn't going to be out here forever. Uh, I might need to play some Tomatis to get rid of cards because remember the most efficient way to draw more cards is to play all of the cards in your hand. And then I don't think I want to give Marty just a second one. I'd, I want to hang on to this and maybe it can be his fourth. Although, yeah, I want to finish my own. I'm going to open yet another ceremony. I still don't get to draw anything. Let's see, Marty, he's just going to open a ceremony as well. And, yeah, he'll keep his Cocopelli card a bit secret. He's going to play that out there to, his, to be his second one. So as for me now, I could play it and be Marty's third, but why would I want to do that? I'll just play it to my own ceremony. So that means I score the first point of the game. There we go. I'll put it down there for now. And I get to draw three cards for free. So I've got a Cocopelli card. Ooh, the paw. When you play a card to another player's ceremony, you're awarded a point. I like that. If your hand is empty, draw five cards and earn three points. <gasps> and I've got, I've got too many things, though, of course. I do have a Cocopelli card now, though. So I could finish that ceremony and make space. I think, yeah, I want this out. If your hand is empty, draw five cards and get three points. I'd like that out. Marty is going to finish his own ceremony off and lose that special power. But, so this counts as two when he plays it because of this ability. So this is completed. Anytime a Cocopelli is played on your ceremonies, you are awarded a point. So there's his point for that. Uh, and then this is finished. So we go to the relevant ceremony. He gets the four points on top. So the next person to complete that type will only get three. And then after that, we put an end game tile on. And it's just worth one every time after that. So this ceremony is completed. These cards are discarded. And he gets those points because he was the person that finished it. But he also owned the ceremony that was finished. So he gets an extra point. So he's definitely in the lead there. He's ran out of cards, so he needs to earn an extra point and three more cards. So whenever you complete a ceremony, whether it's yours or not, you're awarded an extra point. Yeah, the if your hand is empty ability, he wants the most points for that. He wants that to stick around for ages. And then when you complete a ceremony, get a point. Yeah, like all of this stuff. Back to me, and I could finish this, but my Cocopelli's count as two while that's out. I could actually play this to... I'm not particularly fussed about playing to all of Marty's areas. I'm going to play this on Spider Woman. So she's got one, two, three cards on her right now. My ceremonies are completed with only three cards. So we can say when one of my ceremonies is completed, I get a point. This is completed with just one card from it. So I've got two more in my deck. So I get the four points from there. It's my ceremony. So I get a point. And then they go to my discard pile. Now I've got a space for a new ceremony. I'm going to open this. When you play a card to someone else's ceremony, you're awarded a point. My hand is empty, so I earn three points and draw five cards. The downside of that is it's going to be longer until I get to activate it again. But there's another Cocopelli. I could just complete one of these uh, on my next turn. But that's two actions for now. Marty wants to draw cards as well, so he's going to have to add that to his own ceremony. His hand is empty, so he earns three points and draws five cards. Some Cocopellis, but he's lost that ability where they uh, count as more. But he does get a point every time they're played. And do you know what Marty could do? I don't know if this will work well long term. I think it will, you know. He is going to grab his Cocopelli card and he's going to play it to mine because my ceremonies are completed with three cards and no matter who puts that third card on them, uh, he can stop me having this ability and get some points in the bargain. So he's going to play that to my ceremony. He's going to complete it. So he only gets points when he plays Cocopelli's to his ceremonies. 
when you complete a ceremony, you're awarded a point. When one of my ceremonies is completed, I'm awarded a point. Then the ceremony itself, Marty gets those three points. So there is an endgame tile. There are ten, though, don't worry. Uh, and then it was my ceremony that was completed, so I get an extra point. So Marty's in the lead there, and he stopped me having an ability I quite liked, especially because I had a Coco Pelly waiting here. Back to me, though. And yeah, I'm not in a position where I could just do that to Marty, play that there. It would just be his third card. But I would get a point for it, because I've got that ability out. Yeah, that is actually now turning into a bad thing for me, because abilities like this that I really like... I don't know, but I could play a card on here, and if Marty has that Feather card, he could complete that and stop me having that ability. I think I would like the ability for when I complete a ceremony, whoever it is, I get a point. Or I could, you know, complete it myself with a Coco Pelli card, if I just went for Feather and then completed it myself. But Marty might not have a card like that. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the draw card action on his and earn myself a point for playing a card to another player's ceremony. Or maybe I should have played that and then a Coco Pelli card on it, because now Marty can just... I don't know what he's got, of course, but he can play a Coco Pelli card there. When a Coco Pelli is on there, he gets a point. When one is played on his ceremonies, then this is complete. He gets the four points for this, and it was his ceremony, so he gets another point. I've really helped him there, and that's just one of his actions. And he could get a new ability, so... Oh, he should have done this first. Backtrack. He'll put that out first, so whenever any of his ceremonies are completed, he gets a point. Makes perfect sense to do that first, because then he would have got an extra point that time. Over to me then, head in hands, what am I going to do? So I can't play to Marty's Ceremonies unless it's with a Coco Pelli card, and he gets a point if I play a Coco Pelli card to one of his things, and it wouldn't complete anything, so I'm not going to do that. So if playing just to my own, it's going to have to be, well, what if we just do this, and then a Coco Pelli, and complete it? I'm very wary of leaving things with just two on them because of this card now. This has now gone from being fantastic to... Just uh, panic inducing. So I get four points for that. I completed one of my ceremonies. I completed a ceremony. So that's an extra two. And my ceremony has been completed just, you get an eight point for that, whether it, no ability required for that point. That's quite good. I think I've caught up a bit there. I'm only like a point behind there. Marty is, yeah, he's just going to play cards to his own so that he can trigger this ability that's another three points and three four five cards that's his turn but he's now got some abilities he could get that double coco Pelli ability back out again my turn i can't play that to marty's so unless i want to discard the i could exchange a card if i just want that to stay out but it's an action to do that am i wasting time just doing that with one card i'm going to pop it out and see what happens uh, so I get three points and draw up five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And what have I got? Okay, oh, a new ability. Play card action. So for one play card action, play two cards to different ceremonies. I think I would like that for next time. Because also there's, there's a bonus for having the fewest cards left. It's not a great bonus in a two-player game. I think it works out at like two points. I think the, the person with the fewest gets five points and the second fewest gets three points. So that could be something. I could end the game before Marty works out his plan or something. But let's see what he's going to do. I think he's going to do a Coco Pelli, complete this ceremony. Will he do that first? Yes. So when he completes a ceremony, he gets a point. He's completed the feather kind of ceremony. So he gets four points. But it was one of my ceremonies and I get the built-in points. So that's another that's two for me. But it was like five for Marty, wasn't it? So I think he worked out better on that. And he stopped me getting those extra points and drawing more cards. Second ability, I think he wants his Coco Pelli cards to count as two when he plays them. Because he could play that on mine and finish one of my cards. Does he know that I don't like this? Back to me. With one play action, though, I can go... When one of your ceremonies is completed, you get an extra point. And whenever you complete a ceremony, you get a point. That's just one action. I think a second action, yeah. Every time I play a Coco Pelli, I get a point. I'll pop that on there. And I'm going to put a wild card on top of it. I'm going to actually tuck that underneath just so I can see what the ability is. Uh, so I get a point for playing a Coco Pelli onto one of my ceremonies. Uh, and I have no cards, so I get an extra point and three cards, because we're back to that now. Uh, so it means I can't do that all the time because one of my two actions, I only have one card to play. Oh well. So Marty can't play to this ceremony and complete it. He could play to one of these. There is four points available for this one. Yeah, he's going to just keep taking advantage of my ceremonies and not really build them up on his as much. Uh, yeah, he's going to complete this ceremony. So he gets 
a point for completing a ceremony, and it's the first uh, turtle one, so he gets four points there. And I get a point whenever one of my ceremonies is completed, and the built-in point. So I get two points there. Will he build up his own? His Cocopellis do count as two cards as well, he could have put that on something else. Oh, why doesn't he put it? Yeah, little take back, but not much. He's going to play it here to the play card action because his Cocopelli cards count as two cards the moment he plays them. He can complete that, get the same amount of points, but get rid of a better ability of mine. And then his second, he would like this ability to be on at some point. Why doesn't he uh, get, when one of his is completed, he gets a point. He'll put another one of those on. Okay, back to me. Frustrating, because now I was going to play all these cards, but I think I'm just going to play. Your ceremonies are completed with only three cards. Let's put those there and finish this off. So I get that when one of my ceremonies is completed and when I complete a ceremony and it's my ceremony. So that's an extra three on top of those points. And that's my turn. Update on the points there. I'm actually in the lead. Although I went first, didn't I? Uh, so Marty is stuck, actually. He should have played that to my ceremony last turn, I think. So yeah, he wants that on his, but he can't open a ceremony on my board. He's going to have to spend an action to draw a card. And in the same situation, he can't play that one. He's going to have to draw again. And that's his two actions. Oh dear. I'm in a bit of a similar state, but I, I do have a place where I can open a ceremony. So I'm going to play there. I have no cards. I get a point and three cards. So my second action, I think I would like this play card action to go out again. Play two cards to different ceremonies. That might mess me up again, but at least I've got the ability. Marty, in a very similar situation, he can play a card to me, but it won't really help him. So is he going to draw again? Oh dear. And yeah, he could maybe he waits till next turn to see if I play another and then he could play the two that finishes it. He's going to draw. There's no hand limit. Oh no. Mm. Has Marty run out of cards that will help him there? There are Coco Pellies in there, I'm sure. Back to me. I can just, yeah, I'll put, I'll put these on my own. They're not getting finished because I, I need four cards again to finish, but I do get a point and three cards. Is this the, has this been the mid game turnaround? Marty then, what does he do? He doesn't want these cards, but he needs a Coco Pelli card or something. There we go. So this counts as two at the moment that he plays it. He's going to go for, he's going to go for this one. So when Coco Pellis are played, he gets a point. Coco Pelli counts as two, so completes this. He completes it a ceremony and it's his own and he gets the built in point. So that's three. And it was this symbol. So he gets those four points. And, and so next turn, he can start a new ceremony again. Over to me. I could play another one of those down again, and I could put a Cocopelli down somewhere. Oh, I get to play two cards as one action, don't I? I think I'll put one on here whenever you complete a ceremony. So I played a Cocopelli card, and I completed a ceremony, and one of my ceremonies was completed, and the built-in point for one of your ceremonies being completed is done. And then I get the turtle points. And then I can start this. The draw card action gives me one extra, which I don't really want, but I can play it there. Uh, and, and it lets me get a point and three cards. Not many left. Marty's got loads more cards left. And there's some Coco Pellis. They don't count as two, but they get me a point if I play them on my own ceremonies. Marty still seems stuck. I mean, he could gain the ability to play two at a time or to finish ceremonies with three cards, but he hasn't got cards that would really help him. It would just be helping me get closer to finishing my ceremonies. So I think he's going to draw again. Oh no. But yeah, he maybe should have stopped drawing and just played. But he was stuck. He couldn't play when he had just a couple of cards. Oh yeah, th then he'll play this. And then at least he can complete. No, he can't complete the turtle one. That'll just be his second card. He's going to draw again then. Oh dear. Yeah, in a bad position, but I think a bad decision to keep drawing cards as well. Back to me. So I think I'm going to complete my own here. I played a Cocopelli. That's a point. And I played to one of my own ceremonies and I get a built-in point for my ceremony completing. And this is gone now. Another endgame tile on there. Second, oh, I should have played a Coco Pelli card first when... Yeah, let's do it, because I think I've had a point for playing a Coco Pelli card and I didn't play a Coco Pelli card. So first, let's play a Coco Pelli card on something. I'll just put it on the... I don't know, I'll put it on the play cards to all the neighbor ceremonies. I don't really care about that sticking around. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't get I wouldn't get any extra points. I've already given me the points that I would have. So that's my two actions. Marty, oh could now. With all of his cards here, he's going to put this play card action one out so he can play two cards with one action. 
And he's going to play. Oh, he doesn't want to play. Oh, no, he's not. He's not. He's not. Because he, he has to play into different things, so he wouldn't be able to complete this this turn. So he's just going to complete it. So he's completed a ceremony, so he gets a point. One of my ceremonies has been completed, so I get a point and the built-in point. And the ceremony is this three-pointer, so he gets that. Another endgame tile. But I think we're going to run out of cards first. Back to me. I'm going to finish this ceremony while it's worth a load of points. I don't get an extra point for the Cocopelli card. But one of my own ceremonies is complete, and I get the built-in point, and I get four points for this type being finished. I have no cards left, so I get a point and three cards. And that was just one action, right? I think I'll put this out whenever I play a card to another ceremony. If I do that, I haven't really done that much this game, have I? Uh, so, so back to Marty. I think he's going to pop this out, and he's going to try clearing out his hand a bit. Second action, he will play those cards out. But he's not going to be able to play that card. We'll see. Uh, over to me. I could play that to Marty's instead of mine, because I don't know that I've got Cocopelli cards left even. Yeah, I'm going to play that to Marty's. Doesn't help me. Oh, it does. Play a card to another ceremony. Get a point. And I'll put that one on mine. Help finish it. I have no cards. I get a point. And three cards. <gasps> the game ends at the end of this round. And I feel like Marty is so far behind and is not going to score any points. In fact, no, Marty has no hope of scoring any points. I didn't realise I was so close to finishing. He's going to have to draw a card. That doesn't help him. Because he could, he could play that to mine, but it wouldn't complete it. He can't open ceremonies on my board. No, he's just going to have to... Oh, he could, he could have, at some point ages ago, he could have exchanged his entire hand, shouldn't he? That's what... Yeah, there would have been a great big flashing subtitle or a frustrated comment that, yeah, he should have discarded, like, his five cards at the bottom of his deck and drawn five new cards. That could have, like, uh, given him a new lease of life because I think by not doing that and just drawing a card at a time, he's ended up well behind. <laughs> and, yeah, it's shown in the scores. I got 64 in the end. Marty got 46. So, yeah, if you don't play well enough, you will mirror each other's scores, which isn't a great thing. Oh, and we do have, at the very end, the final scoring for... I have the fewest cards, so I get five points, and Marty gets three. And then you get a point for each ceremony still out on your board. So I get one, two, three. Marty gets another five. So that puts us for final scores on 72 to 56. That Marty has... No, that's that's no difference, is it? There's no difference because I gained five and three and Marty gained five and three. So we cancelled that final scoring out. So same difference in the scores. But there we go. Marty came on strong, but of course forgot that he could have exchanged all of his useless cards. But I think, yeah, having, having these full ceremonies just uh, made him full up. And the fact that he would need four cards to them. And I was getting along fine. He got loads of points for getting rid of my special abilities. And that was great. But I think he did that too much. To the point where I don't even know that exchanging cards would have helped him out enough. But hey, there we go. That is a game of Coco Pelli. Hope that gave you a good idea of what it is like. And if you'd be interested in giving it a go. If you'd like to know what we thought of Coco Pelli, Then there will be a first impressions video coming up right after this one. Uh, it's linked in the end of the video or in the description if you'd like to go there now. Thank you very much for watching. There are hundreds of playthroughs on this channel if you'd like to find more, including plenty of Stefan Feld games that are among our favourite games. Things like Trajan and Macau, they're amazing. If you'd like to help me keep making more playthroughs, again, it's patreon.com forward slash slickerdrips. Your support would be greatly appreciated. But thank you most of all for watching, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.